Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching EE3325. Uh, in this video, I'd like to show you how to solve uh, problem 6.7 in Ulibi 7th edition. So since in class this year, 2020, we're a little bit short on time due to uh, the modified schedule, uh, I wanted to show you this problem so that you have an idea of how to do it, since we might not be able to cover it in class. So this problem, 6.7, says that we have a rectangular conducting loop uh, shown in this figure. It's rotating at 600 RPM uh, in a uniform magnetic flux density that's given. Um, now, if you are looking in the book, um, I believe that it doesn't uh, say, but you can um, basically realize that the angle it's going, that the loop is going to make with respect to the x-axis is going to be changing in time. Um, and that because it's spinning around the z-axis, um, we can call this angle uh, omega t. And um, that angle omega t is going to be here, and it's, that's going to be changing with respect to time. And what we want to do is we want to find the current that's induced in the loop uh, if its internal resistance is 0 0.5 ohms. So this is the resistance that's in the wire. So this is just resistance in the wire. <clears throat> and because this loop is changing, uh, moving uh, through the magnetic field, um, we're going to have a current that's induced. And so although this magnetic field, the flux density is constant, it's not changing with respect to time, uh, it is always in the y direction. And what we can see is that the loop itself right, is going to have uh, different um, amounts that are uh, uh, the, the face of the loop is actually going to be changing in size in the magnetic field. So as, as we rotate through, um, as this is rotating through, the amount of this loop that's facing that y direction is, is going to be changing. So um, that means that um, we are going to be trying to find a EMF voltage. Um, and because the loop is moving, but the field is stationary, we're going to call it the motional VM. VEMF. So if we recall from the book, right, we have the transformer EMF plus the motional EMF. And the transformer EMF happens when the magnetic field is changing, but the loop is stationary. And the motional EMF happens when the loop is moving, but the field is stationary. So we're going to say that this is zero and we just have the motional EMF in this case. Okay, so one more thing that we uh, want to do is based on this 6,000 RPM, let's determine what the actual frequency is. So 6,000 revolutions per minute. So this, if you do this math, you'll get 200 pi radians per second. All right, so we're going to need to use this um, later on uh, as we work to find the motional EMF. So we're going to need to find the, the motional EMF, and we're going to use that plus the internal resistance and Ohm's law to determine the current that's going to be induced. So let's work towards finding this motional EMF so we can use Ohm's law. Now in this problem, like many of the other ones, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the flux. So let's find the magnetic flux, capital phi, as the magnetic field goes through that loop. So 
So <clears throat> the magnetic flux density is y hat 50. Milli Teslas. And we're going to need to determine ds. So let's look at the surface that we have. So on this loop, if we have the loop like this, and if we think about when the loop is here at time equals zero, and we move around on this surface here, we can see that the x is changing. And we can also see that z is changing. So let's say that our ds is going to be y hat dx dz. Okay. Now let's determine what should the limits of these be. Uh, what is going to be uh, happening on this picture? So we need to figure out what the x limit is going to be and what the z limit is going to be. So let's take a closer look. <clears throat> so as the wire, let's imagine this is the overhead view. And this here is the wire. And right here, we have z axis pointed out of the page. This angle, omega t, is changing like this. And we know that the distance of this is two centimeters from the problem statement. So this distance is going to be changing, right, with respect to time. It's going to be changing. But we know the angle, and we also know this distance, two centimeters. So we can use trig to determine that this is going to be equal to two centimeters cosine phi t, okay, the cosine of that angle. So we'll say it's two cosine omega t centimeters. So this value in the x direction, right? So on the x axis, the distance that we're going to integrate out to is going to be changing in time. And so from this, we can see that that will start at x equals zero. And we'll need to integrate out to two cosine omega t. And what you should notice uh, that's different about this problem is that uh, because we're doing uh, motional EMF, the flux actually is going to have a time dependent term in the integral limits. So unlike uh, when we were looking at the um, transformer EMF where we didn't have time dependent terms in the limits. And then in Z, we're uh, just going to integrate up to three centimeters because we can see right, that the size of the loop in the z direction uh, is a constant three centimeters. Um, but it's just that part in the x that's actually changing. OK. So now that we have this integral completely set up, we can solve the integral. Okay. So integrating this, we get 50 millitesla multiplied by three centimeters multiplied by two cosine 
omega t c centimeters. Doing this math, three times 10 to the minus fifth cosine omega t as the result of this. So this is the uh, flux that's going through this loop. So as the loop is spinning around, the amount of magnetic field, the flux through it is going to be changing. And that's because at different points in time, right, the amount of loop that is um, in the y direction is changing. So right, if we think about this, let's consider you know, something like time equals zero seconds and looking overhead. <clears throat> right, at first the loop from above goes all the way out to here to two centimeters. But then after some time passes, the loop has moved up to here, right? And two centimeters is maybe somewhere, let's say it's right here. And then more time passes. And eventually, right, the loop will keep going all the way around in the circle. But at some places, right, the loop might even be like this. And at this point, right, there is actually going to be no magnetic flux. And that's because, right, if, if we think of the field, which was in the y direction, uh, in this case, right, there's actually no loop of wire for the magnetic field to go through. And so because of that, this uh, phi, the magnetic flux, is going to be changing. And it's going to be changing on the basis of cosine omega t. All right. Now, the, now that we have that and we have an understanding of why it changes like that, um, due to the fact that the loop is actually rotating, so different amounts of the loop are exposed to different amounts of the field at different times. Uh, we can find the EMF, okay, uh, which we said was just going to be equal to the motional EMF. And we know that the motional EMF is equal to uh, the negative of the derivative of the flux with respect to time uh, multiplied by the number of turns that we have. In this case, right, there's just one loop. So we can simplify this down to just being d phi dt. All right. And we just found phi in the last problem. And phi was 3 times 10 to the minus fifth cosine omega t. OK, so this will then be minus 3 times 10 to the minus fifth multiplied by the frequency, which comes out during the derivative, multiplied by sine omega t. And right, this is equal to 200 pi, as we found in the beginning of the problem. So this is going to be an expression for the voltage. And remember, 
to find the current, right, we can use Ohm's law V equals IR. So V EMF is going to be equal to the I induced multiplied by the resistance of the wire. All right, so I hope this helps you uh, understand this problem um, since we won't, likely won't have time to uh, talk about it in class. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.